Hi, so we're going to add in some uncertainty into our intertemporal choice model. Now, when we talk about uncertainty, what we are saying is that we have uncertain income or uncertain y, as we denote income, uh, which seems reasonable. In, in reality, we don't necessarily, necessarily know what our income is going to be for our whole lifetime, so in the future we're not 100% certain on what our income level will be. And this uncertainty about our income means that we are also uncertain about how much we are able to consume our consumption C, because we can only consume based on what we have as income. We need to earn something in order to spend it on consumption. So how does this factor into our model? Well, we now maximize the expected value of lifetime utility instead of just maximizing our lifetime utility. We have some uncertainty about it. So we can only maximize given the information we know or given our expectations of what our income will be. So our utility is now still going to be given by U1 and it our utility solves the maximization problem, but we're maximizing an expected value uh, with our expectations being in period one. And this expectation is similar to what we saw before. It's the sum of infinitely many uh, consumptions in future periods. Uh, these consumptions are each discounted using our discount rates and this is to the power of t minus 1, so say in the second period we'll be discounting by beta, in the third period beta squared and so on, and then we just multiply by our utility from consumption in period two. So this is our new maximization problem for utility where we're just uncertain about our income and thus we're uncertain about consumption, hence why this has to be a maximization in any period beyond period one. And what, what we need to maximize with respect to is our intertemporal budget constraint. Uh, so I'll write the intertemporal budget constraint IBC, but we do not have to change this. We're, we're just maximizing an uncertain level of consumption, but our intertemporal budget constraint stays the same as what we had before. So we, we still have uh, infinite levels of income yt, or it's the sum of the income such that we, we get a present value income because we're discounting at the interest rate, uh, as in our permanent hypothesis or permanent income hypothesis video, we can allow for some initial assets uh, b, and so on the left hand side we have present value income, and on the right hand side this has to be equal to our present value of consumption which is given by the discount, the sum of discounted consumptions for over an infinite time horizon. Oops. Okay, so this is, this is what we're maximizing U1, subject to this intertemporal budget constraint. So we've done that before where we derived the Euler equation in a previous video, check that out if you haven't. So I won't go over the method for that again, but this is pretty much identical method to that, but now we're maximizing with respect to expected values in future periods. So we just have a first order condition where we're taking derivatives with respect to each period. And what we did when we were deriving the Euler equation was we take the derivative of the Lagrangian so we have this as our objective function that we're maximizing, and we have our constraint, the intertemporal budget constraint, which we multiply by lambda, our Lagrange multiplier, and then we substitute in the two first order conditions using lambda, so we substitute in to lambda using our first order conditions in period t and period t plus one. So watch that Euler equation video if you're not sure of the method. I'm just going to write down the solution to this because we've already done all the working in a previous video. Okay, so we take our first order conditions with respect to consumption in period T and consumption in period T plus one. 
But what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we have expectations in period T. So we're in period T, we are certain about what happens in that period, but any period after period T we are uncertain about. So for example in period T plus 1 we're going to have to take expectations of that using the expectations operator conditional on future events or conditional on period T information. So once we do that and substitute in this into our first order condition for CT using set it, setting this equal to lambda and substituting it in, rearranging and we will get out this condition which looks very similar to our original Euler equation but now we have some expectations in it which makes it the stochastic Euler equation which says that marginal utility in period or of consumption in period T is equal to the discount rate multiplied by the interest rate multiplied by the expectation of if my pen would work properly whoops multiplied by the expectation of marginal utility of consumption in period t plus one so this that we have here is our stochastic euler equation So quite simple, it has very similar intuition as the original Euler equation where if we increase our savings just a little amount in period t plus 1, uh, the, the loss of utility that we have from having to decrease our consumption to increase uh, saving will be equal to the discounted value of the expected utility we gain in, from an increase in consumption in period t plus 1. Uh, this is an expectation because what we have is an optimizing consumer so this consumer is optimizing but they're doing the best they can given the information they have and to do the best they can all they can do is optimize given their expectations of future consumption. In the previous Euler equation we assumed that we knew how what our income was going to be so we could map out exactly what our path of consumption would be in the future but in this case we don't know exactly so our best way of optimizing we assume is just to optimize based on our expected level of income in the future and to base our consumption patterns on that and that's what gives us the stochastic Euler equation. So that just about wraps up this video, make sure to check out the playlist for future videos, the next one will be using this result in the Hall's random walk hypothesis, uh, subscribe for future videos and playlists and make sure to leave a like on this video if it was at all useful.